So this example aim to solve this problem. I have an application that needs to monitor one or more IMAP Office 365 folder. The application has a web interface to configure that it's used to configure the application. A user or more than one users must be able to specify one or more email to monitor and they should be able to give access to the application. And the application must be capable to access IMAP folder even when the user is not connected. So this is the scenario. Without the need to use OAuth, this scenario can be solved for giving to the application the email and the password associated to the email. But with OAuth, and with the new requirement from Microsoft to use the OAuth, we need to change this method of access. So each user should be able to specify one email and then press a button and give the application access to that folder with um, IMAP. And I would, uh, we should be able to use um, MimeKit or other IMAP um, code because we already use that and we don't want to use um, directly Microsoft Graph API. So this application is made to dissect all the steps you need to obtain uh, to solve this scenario. It's a simple web application test. If you start the web application test, it starts and it gives you a, a Zwogger page where you look at three method that will um, solve this scenario. One of the most important is the get token because the get token is the API, is the method that will be used to um, access and to get the token from the application. So first step, we need to create the application. I am now in um, Azure portal. This is the Azure account that back, uh, the backup um, Office 365 um, account. This is a test account. I'm starting go to the Azure Active Directory app registration and I start with a new registration. I call the application test one. This is not important. Um, it is fine for me that this, uh, um, this application can be used only by account in this organizational directory and I want to access with the web platform and I need to specify the URL that will be used to get the token. So it's my localhost 7044. And then if you look at Zwogger, it's OAuth to get token. So it's the OAuth to get token. So don't, don't, be, uh, don't be worried, you can change this uh, later and I'm registering the application. This gives immediately uh, an application ID that I can copy, go to the example and copy into the client ID in the app setting JSON. And then I can also copy the directory, the tenant ID, and I use to create the URL to access the server. And finally, I can come back and open certificate and secret, create a new certificate, a new secret, give it a name and you can add the secret. And now you can simply copy the value. Remember, you need to copy right now because if you navigate away from this page, the, the secret will disappear. And I include the secret there and I save the file. Um, now everything is ready, but I still need to give uh, some permission to the API. So first of all, I need to add a permission, Microsoft Graph, delegated permission, and I'm looking for a IMAP permission. And this is the permission that allow to access as user. So this permission allow me to read and write access to mailbox using a token of the user. So this is the permission I need to be delegated to access an IMAP folder. And then here you can do the first mistake because you need also to add another permission that is called offline access. Because if you want to be able to still access to the IMAP folder, even when the user is not logged in in your application, you need to use this claim because this is the claim that allowed the application to maintain access to data that the user had given access to. If you don't use this scope, 
you need the user to be logged in and perform the login each time you want to access the mail. So this is a possible mistake in configuration. And that's all for the configuration on the app. To create the application, everything you really need is this docs by Microsoft. But the main problem is this documentation that is quite complete has no uh, working code. So I've done um, several uh, tentatives and I've got um, in that end. So first of all, you need to read this article uh, really uh, with, with, with a lot of attention. And I've show you how I can uh, register your application and that's the first part. And then you can use the get access token section where Microsoft suggests to use Microsoft Access Library Client Library. I had problem with the library, but, but, pri but primarily because I want to be able to specify the scope and I want to be able to, to have the full control over the OAuth process. So the article specified that you can use uh, all the flow of OAuth and it's really important that you check this scope that you need to use because I found example in the internet where um, the example use wrong scope. So in my uh, example, we have um, I, I, I've created a simple class to do the whole OAuth process. It's not complex. It's OAuth to client. It's simple uh, user to create the request for uh, for OAuth to login. And the first um, part I want to show you is the trigger login. This is the method that will generate the URL to login the user. And it's the first part for obtaining the access token. And this is the very, uh, the very important thing. It's the point where you can do mistakes. You need to start, you need to use um, code flow. This is my example, a code flow with the open ID. Offline access is important because the application should be able to keep access to the IMAP folder after the user granted consent. And this is the very, very important claim. That is the same claim the Microsoft article is, is specifying. And if you don't specify this claim, it's not going to work. Now, when the application is running, I can go to this trigger login um, page. And in the real situation, in a real application, this is link and this link automatically will redirect you to the login page to start the OAuth procedure, the code flow. In this example, I want to show uh, every step. So I want to generate the link and let the user look at the, uh, at the link. And this is the important part. The scope is open, the offline access and the scope for access as user. So that's important. This allow me to verify that the link is okay. All the other parts are standard for OAuth um, login. Now I'm going to sign in my application. I'm already signed in in my uh, application. And if this, if this is the first part, uh, the first time you are logged into this application, it will give you a consent, but I've already tested the application. So it, uh, it does not ask me the consent. And now I'm redirected in the get token where the code is simply using the code and the state returned with query string to create the request that will be made to the out uh, token uh, endpoint to obtain a valid authentication token. And now I'm saving this token in memory. Um, it, it's simply saved in memory and I'm returning it to the user. And this gives me the ability to look at the token returned. So first of all, the token is, it has a short expire. It's one hour and a half, a couple of hour maximum. So this token will expire soon. But since I use the offline access scope, I've also obtained a refresh token that would last for, um, I don't remember exactly, but one or two years. So this means that after one hour and a half, this token is not valid anymore, but the application can use the refresh token to obtain a new token and continue to have access to your IMAP folder. So the requirement that the user should be able to authorize my application, and this is what I've done now, but then the application is able to continue using, using the token even if the user is not logged in. It's satisfied. Now, the last part, I need to verify that the access token is indeed valid to access my IMAP folder. So I have another endpoint where I'm using MIMEKit 
to try and access my folder. So I copy this address, okay? So this is the address uh, you said to um, call my application and specifying the email I want to access. Okay, uh, that's okay. So the the first part this is very important that you check the expiration. So if the expiration token is uh, about to expire or is expired because it's um, it's not valid anymore. We need to refresh the token and refreshing token, it's uh, really simple because I have my application that generate another request where I simply called um, the token endpoint, specify my refresh token, my last token and ask for a new token. So in this example, the token is still valid because I've generated a few minutes ago. And in the real client, uh, this is needed because when the token is expired, you need to refresh. So for now, this code is uh, not called, but this is very important. This is another part where you can get it wrong because you know it, it, you, you can get a token, the token uh, lasts for one hour and a half, and after that time you're not able to access your IMAP folder anymore. So you wonder, how can I have uh, an, an access that is going to last for uh, years? And that's the reason you need to specify the offline access and implement the refresh token. Um, now I simply use the SASL mechanism, and this is the class in MimeKit that allows me to specify an email address and access with the access token. The email address is necessary because the access token identified a user in Office 365, but this user can access more than one email. There can be shared email. So it's important that you specify the email address. And now I have the new client and it's the new IMAP client and uh, I can connect a sync. And the important part is the authenticate a sync. And if this call is gonna fail, it has a problem. If, it's call, if this call is gonna um, have success, it will uh, give you access to the to your um, um, your folder. Okay, the call passed. I was able to authenticate my user with my access token. So I now try a simple code to query a um, folder and try to find all the UID, all the message ID that are not read it. So I'm indeed getting data. And for a final example, if um, you come back to the um, to the documentation about Microsoft, it specify how you can create SAS, so how to choose token to access your IMAP folder. And you need to compose uh, a string and then you encode in base64. And uh, it's very, very important uh, that you understand that this uh, Piece of this piece of the string, the caret a, this kind of symbol followed by a. In, in reality, it's a byte with a value one. So I've re-implemented this in code. It's really simple. I use a memory stream, a binary writer. Then it's important that you use ASCII encoding. I encode the user equal part, then the email address part, then the byte one, then the outburner and a space, then the my access token and a couple of one. Um, byte, byte, uh, byte with one content, and I'm returning everything to the users. Uh, th this is the row byte, the sequence of byte of the out string, and this is the the base64 encoded string. Why am I returning this? Uh, because you can use this string to understand if you're able to connect not only with the mime kit, or if you if you can connect directly with another IMAP or, or with direct connection. So I want to be able to use this token and I'm copying this token in a direct connection. So I need a Linux machine and open SSL. So here we are, I create, I opened a WSL2 um, terminal. So I'm now in uh, Debian. Um, Linux uh, machine where I uh, have OpenSSL um, configured and I can use OpenSSL in client mode to connect to the IMAP. This is the IMAP port. 
of outlook.office365.com. Uh, this is similar to Telnet. It, it, it starts a connection, but thanks to OpenSSL, it will handle all the TLS and shaking. So I, I've, I can use like a Telnet. And the application is answering me as it's indeed, okay, the Microsoft Exchange, I'm up for services ready. So I can start issuing a command. In IMAP, a command is uh, start with the ID of a command. It can be a number and then the command and a uh, capab capability is usually the first command. It asks the server, which are the capability of the server? And the server indeed confirm me that the out, uh, so out to is um, supported. So I issue the second command and is the authenticate and is so out to and follow it by my token. I press return and okay, authenticate completed. This verify that the token that I've generated is able to access my IMAP folder. Now, to complete the example, you can simply wait a couple of hours, go away, come back to your computer and um, try to get this um, URL again and verify that the second time you will have an expired token, so you will go into this part of the code. The token is refreshed, you obtain a new token, and you are still able to access your IMAP folder. So my um, original requirement were met. I have the application that can use the IMAP to monitor uh, Office 365 folder. This application has a web interface to configure. I can generate that link to uh, let the user give access to the application. And then with the offline access scope, I am able to let the application access my email even if the user is not logged anymore. And that completes the example.